Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new unusual discoveries in regards to neutron stars, but more specifically in regards to a very unusual type of a neutron star known as a magnetar, something that today is used for a lot of different explanations of other mysteries, such as various unusual radio emissions known as fast radio bursts that seem to come from all over the place for unknown reasons, or some other unusual emissions that cannot be explained in any other way. In other words, today magnetars are basically kind of like a scapegoat for when we just don't really understand what's happening somewhere out there, with the only explanation being that some kind of extreme physical environment created by these objects seem to produce various types of emissions and various types of mysteries that currently cannot be explained otherwise. But in the last few months, a few interesting observations and theories have been proposed about magnetars and also other neutron stars as well, that help us understand that, well, basically these are just really, really strange objects, very, very unique, and something that we cannot even wrap our heads around. But first, a brief reminder of what these objects are. So following a supernova of a certain type of a star, usually a star that's massive enough to produce a neutron star, but not massive enough to produce a black hole, some of these objects, in some really rare cases, will actually end up producing what's known as a pulsar, of which we've actually discovered several thousand, and that's essentially a neutron star that spins really really fast and also produces astrophysical jets which then can be visible from very far away distances, but in some really rare cases it can also produce a magnetar, the most powerful magnet in the universe. Something that's so extremely powerful magnetically speaking that it actually starts producing some ridiculous effects right around it, especially close to the surface. For example, one of these effects starts affecting space-time itself, the fabric that we are basically in. The empty space around the magnetar first of all starts to produce all sorts of particles because of ridiculously powerful magnetic fields around it and because of the famous E equals mc square. But second of all, it also changes the properties of space around itself, turning it into almost like a lens that starts to refract light and even produces mirror images in some sense producing very similar effects to what we kind of expect from, I guess, a crystal, although in this case there is no crystal, it's just space itself. But now the scientists have also realized that this magnetic field seems to affect the surface of the magnetar itself. It changes the properties of the surface to essentially make it extremely strange and very, very counterintuitive. The surface in this case seems to actually become solid, kind of like, I guess, a terrestrial planet. Although really not, because here we're talking about some of the most extreme environments in the universe. But all of this really being the result of super powerful magnetic fields produced by these unusual objects. The objects that were only theoretical up until a few decades ago. And theoretically these objects were initially used to explain what's known as soft gamma repeater. The events that were detected back in the 70s and were detected several times since but that could not really be explained otherwise unless there was some kind of a very magnetized neutron star creating all of these emissions. And actually the most famous of them all today is the one that happened in the Milky Way galaxy back in 2014 and the one around which we then also identified an actual fast radio burst, FRB. And that's how the scientists were initially able to connect these two events, with basically magnetars potentially explaining both mysteries at the same time. But one of the reasons why we think there aren't really that many of them out there, and also what we think eventually happens to magnetars, is that they have to, at some point, lose all of their magnetic field through the emissions of various gamma rays and x-rays over a period of several thousand years. This is of course how the scientists explain their evolution, and also why we don't really see a lot of them out there. As of today, only just over 30 of them have been found so far, making these some of the rarest objects out there. And because the scientists believe that millions of neutron stars must exist in the Milky Way, but basically are difficult to find because they don't emit any light, the fact that there are only 30 magnetars out of millions and millions of neutron stars obviously makes them extremely rare. But it's really because of these ridiculously powerful emissions that can be visible from millions of light years away that the scientists were able to identify them. And it's also the reason why eventually they're going to become extremely silent all of this energy is eventually going to dissipate across the universe. And one of the most well-studied magnetars and one of the closest ones to us is the one whose name you see right here. A magnetar that the scientists have used for a lot of different studies already and was the magnetar where the scientists were able to finally see 
the phenomenon of vacuum refringence. The phenomenon that changes the property of vacuum into something resembling a crystal, even though there is nothing on the inside. But the light does create mirror images. Now, since this magnetar is about 13,000 light years away from us, or basically one of the closest ones we've discovered, a lot of modern telescopes, especially X-ray telescopes, often focus on this magnetar in order to try to solve some of the mysteries of these strange objects. One of these telescopes is NASA's IXPE, that spent several days looking at this particular region, trying to get as much data from the magnetar as possible. But this time, for the first time ever, getting polarized data of the X-rays coming from the magnetar itself. In the process of discovering two really unusual things. First, the light coming from here was not as polarized as the scientists expected, which suggested that this magnetar very likely had no atmosphere whatsoever. Now, we know that a lot of stars have atmospheres. For example, our sun obviously does, but so do a lot of other stars and even neutron stars. As a matter of fact, not so long ago, the Chandra telescope was able to observe X-rays coming from another neutron star, discovering that there was an atmosphere that's approximately 10 centimeters thick. But the polarized light coming from here suggested that the atmosphere turned into something else. And in this case, by looking at slightly different frequencies, they actually did see polarization changing by exactly 90 degrees, which in this case matched a theoretical prediction for if there is a solid surface on a magnetar. But definitely not a solid surface that we have here on planet Earth. As a matter of fact, it's practically impossible for us to imagine what's going on here. But the more intriguing part is the explanation. Here, the scientists believe that the extremely powerful magnetic fields sort of made the atmosphere turn into a solid. In other words, it's almost as if the atmosphere froze over, turning into a kind of ice. Once again, it's the only analogy we have because, in this case, these are some of the most extreme types of matter that we can't even imagine. But the analogy of ice is really the only one that currently makes sense. Although in this case, the scientists believe that the temperature probably played at least some role as well. With the suggestion being that maybe this neutron star was just a little bit too cold for it to have an atmosphere. Instead, everything solidified, turning into a kind of a crust uh, around it. To try to confirm this, the scientists would have to find a very similar magnetar in terms of magnetic field, but with a slightly different temperature. And if they actually see the atmosphere around that magnetar, especially if it's hotter, this would maybe give this hypothesis a little bit more credibility. And so at the moment, this idea of magnetic condensation, or basically turning into solid because of super powerful magnetic fields, at least for now, is a proposition and a hypothesis, but not really a theory. Although I guess what's really intriguing is that in this case, this particular magnetar seems to have at least two very unique, very strange phenomena happening around it. Magnetic condensation and vacuum refringence both of them because of ridiculously powerful magnetic fields. And the natural question here is of course to try to imagine what the surface would even look like, or at least trying to imagine what sort of particles it's probably made out of. Now since we're talking about the neutron star, it's obviously made out of neutrons on the surface. But in this case, because of the magnetic fields, these neutrons are probably arranged in a very specific order along the magnetic lines, but also very likely acquire their own charge essentially creating a very specific structure that follows the magnetic lines, but also a structure that's ionized even though these are neutrons. Or at least that's the guess for now. I'm sure it will change in the next few years. Intriguingly enough though, this is not the only discovery about neutron stars that was made in the last few months. Another discovery in regards to surfaces and the internal structure comes from the other non-magnetized neutron stars that we've discovered many times before. And in this case, the discovery is purely mathematical and theoretical. It was essentially done by trying to calculate the speed of sound inside of a typical neutron star-like object. And in the process, the scientists discovered that based on the mass of the neutron star, it might actually possess very different properties. In this case, much heavier neutron stars will very likely have much stiffer mantle and extremely soft core, whereas the lighter neutron stars will have soft mantle and extremely stiff core with the example that the scientists provide being pralines, chocolate pralines. And so it seems that, depending on the mass of a neutron star, they might actually form slightly different objects, with the mass limit in this case being approximately 1.7 solar masses. So anything more massive starts to acquire much more solid surface and much softer insides. Anything less than 1.7 solar masses remains much more solid on the inside. But naturally, this has to be confirmed through observations, and it hasn't been done yet. This is all just pure math for now. Nevertheless, a pretty intriguing discovery. 
Now I'm sure we'll have more discoveries coming about magnetars and neutron stars in the next few months, but at least for now, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.